Greetings to you from wherever you're watching us. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Well, we're still talking about the FIFA Women's World Cup. It's now at the quarterfinal stage and matches at that stage begins tomorrow. So we'll talk about all of that even as we move on on the show. Our ladies, the, the female senior female basketball team, d Tigress, is still in the news. Hopefully today we will be able to have a conversation with one of them, one, an influential member of that team. Hopefully uh, we will be able to have that discussion. Hopefully she will come through uh, for us. Of course, it's a two-man show. Uh, my colleague, Austin Okon Akman, is with me as we take this trip across the money-spinning world of sports. And, of course, Austin, it's good to see you again. Uh, now, it appears that it's the women all the way. For the past three weeks, it's been about the ladies. <laughs> it's a woman's world, yeah. I mean, it's pretty great to you and, of course, everyone joining us on the show tonight. Still an action-packed world of sports, and the women are, getting, are giving us reasons to talk sports. What a story the Super Falcons tried to tell the world at the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. They were close, this close to making it to the quarterfinals, but football chose England. We'll review the Super Falcons' performance uh, on the show tonight. We'll get a member of the team, an influential member of that team, to talk to us tonight on the program. And as you mentioned, we'll continue to celebrate what the Z Tigress did at the Afro Basket Championship in Rwanda. It's not easy. They went one, two, three, four, four titles in a row. Can you beat that? Phenomenal stuff from the Z Tigress, the captain of the team will be joining us later on the program. We're pumped up tonight for the show. So uh, wherever you are in the world, welcome on board. It's Post Tonight on Channels Television. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Post Tonight on Channels Television. Uh, we'll start you off talking about the ladies. Uh, and hopefully when we get that cue, uh, we'll uh, bring in uh, the guests that we anticipate. Uh, we're just not letting the cat out of the bag. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll do that. But, but uh, like Austin said, we're reviewing the performances if and what if doesn't count, but it must be said, we came pretty close, mighty yeah. close to uh, defeating England. And of course, from the pictures that you begin to see, I counted, we hit the woodwork like four times. There was never mm -hmm. any scenario I thought we were going to lose that game. I don't want to do this to myself. Maybe I'll allow Austin to uh, do the talking. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying not to be nice to me, you know, Because I, I, I won't deny for a very long time, you know, because of my job, I try to take away emotions when mm -hmm. I watch football or watch sports because I'm going to come talk about it on television. But I tell you, this game between Nigeria and England gave me soaked eyes. I was this close to, to crying, you know. I, I miss you. If you come and give me a pinch on my body, I'll cry. You know, I needed it. Smallest reason to cry because we were so, so close. I thought the Super Falcons did enough to win it. But, you know, it got to penalties and penalties, you know, when you get there, it's all lottery and they lost it. So uh, they're out of the competition. But that's the way to lose a football match. Everybody that follows football in Nigeria had something good to say to the Super Falcons. We are so proud of them. We love what they did at the competition. They fought gallantly. That's how to fall, you know. Most importantly now is for us to look back at the achievements of this team and find ways that we can consolidate. Since I was struggle to talk about it, you hear me? let me bring somebody who was right there, did all of the work, represented the country with pride and joy. Let's go to Leicester. That's where Super Falcons defender Ashley Plumter uh, is chilling. She joins us now live on the show. Good evening, Ashley. Welcome to Sports Tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gosh, you made all the emotion come back to me when you were going through that game again. Gosh. I know. I know. It was so, so emotional. But shout out to you and your teammates. You gave Nigeria a good representation. We're proud of you, ladies. We love you for, you know, standing up and letting them know who we are right there in Australia. Ashley Plumter, what sort of experience was it for you? Oh, um, you know what? I've only been back for a day and it's still quite hard to almost like sum up everything that I felt over that five-week period. I feel as if 
it's something that you know it's going to take me a couple of days to like let all the emotions kind of sink in um yeah but going there and, and i think I, i've written on my social media recently is just everything i talk about really is just those group that group of women that i was competing alongside i mean they are some of the most talented and resilient women i've ever met and i feel like i was only able to be able to perform the way that i was able to because of those women that i was surrounded by um yeah i think we went into that tournament into a obviously a very tough group and not many people expected us to to be able to get the results that we did but for us to have that self-belief um in spite of all of that it just goes to show like if that's what we're we're doing um and that we're putting those kind of performances out against teams like that at the world cup then this is something now that we want to be striving towards um on a consistent basis now mm. and, and you went on the socials and you said that you you don't like it when people say african football is boring that we don't get to attack with what the Super Falcons did at the World Cup, have you girls, have you women made a statement? Oh, 100%. 100%. I feel, yeah, I feel like after the game, I made that comment because I constantly hear, and before I even joined the team, I just hear that um, people talk about African footballers just being a very physical game and people neglect the actual technical side, which genuinely being on this team I'm around some of the most technically talented footballers I've ever been around like they really bring me up in in so many ways um I feel like it actually was a challenge for me when I first joined the team because especially being a defender going up against some of those attacking players um they challenge me more they make me a better defender having to be against them because um they yeah they're not just fast and quick but the way that they can manipulate the ball is is unreal so yeah i think i think obviously with three african teams making it out of the group we can see you know these teams aren't just like pushing their way through games through like brute force which is what people have been almost like making the assumptions about african teams before it's like very well worked well tactically put together game plans for us to be able to to get the results against these big teams and cause the the shocks that that people keep talking about no i know i'll ask you one question before we go to my colleague in lagos ashley plumter you came so so close to scoring against england and the woodwork saved them. Let me tell you this. I've watched that highlight more than 10 times. And the sound of the ball when it's thrown the woodwork is still right here in my head. Actually, what sort of moment was that for you? Um, <laughs> honestly, that has been replaying in my head over and over since, since the game. It's that what if, you know. What if it went under the bar? What if? But I guess that's it's football, isn't it? But Honestly, when that ball came out of the box, um, there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to hit it. Obviously, normally, like being a defender, you don't normally get in positions like that to be able to get a strike like that. So I, yeah, I definitely took my opportunity. And at first, when I hit the ball, I couldn't actually see it because there was a defender in the way. So I kind of like yeah. just looked around. The I think I carried on running and just looked and saw the keeper go up for it. And I thought, initially, I thought that like she's gone up for it, but it's gone over and it's gone in the back of the net but yeah i was hit the bar and we, we still were on the attack so i always had to like recover from the shot pretty quick and get myself in a position where i could yeah actually have another shot after that but yeah i think that kind of sums up the game like you said we've we hit the the woodwork a couple of times and we had i said in a post-match interview as well that i think we had the better chances compared to england and just unfortunately, it just didn't go in, in on those occasions. But my goodness, I feel like we, we gave the performance to be able to get the result, that's for sure. Yeah, I have that on right here in my head. And I know it's not going anytime <laughs> soon. Yeah, me is in Lagos. We'll take it from here. <laughs> okay, Ashley, um, thanks for joining us uh, once again. And um, let me be honest. Let me be honest with you. Before the tournament, there were many skeptics. I mean, 
includes my, myself. Uh, I, was, I wasn't too confident. And then all the drama going on uh, between the football, you know, governing body here in Nigeria and the coach. How did the team ensure that all of that drama didn't affect? Because it was obvious from your performance, from the performance of the team, that confidence was high. So how, how were you girls, ladies, not, you know, didn't, how, how did you do it that all of this drama didn't affect performance? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. And I think, um, again, it, in the performances that everybody was able to see, it was kind of, it sums up the characters that we have on the team. Um, obviously, during the tournament, before the tournament, during the tournament, we had conversations internally just as a, a group of players. And um, a lot of people, yeah, voiced their opinion, but we all um, collectively agreed that we were going to focus on trying to get the the results that we wanted and putting the performances that we wanted um, in spite of everything that was going on off the pitch. Um, yeah, everything that was, has kind of been in the media is has been something that we've been having to deal with for a while now and it's not something we ever, we it's not something we ever disregard, but I think this was the perfect opportunity for us to show what we're capable of and almost hopefully get the respect of people to know that we were able to do that even with the difficulties that were were kind of put in front of us. So, um, yeah, I'm just proud of the team for that. Like there was no, when it came to actually being on the pitch, um, I felt like everybody, there wasn't one player who felt like they couldn't put as much out of onto the pitch as they, they could. Um, because I felt as if we all like, we all, it almost like galvanized us a little bit, to be honest, because it was hard for all of us. But because we were all going through the same thing, it was kind of like, well, now it's just down to us to, to get through it, put in the performances that we want and try and um, show the world what we were, were capable of in spite of the difficulties. All right, let me throw this in. It's hard not to talk about the game. Uh, I try as much not to talk about it because it brings back the pain. We're so close yet so far. With the benefit of hindsight, is there anything, is there anything you feel we could have done, should have done, that could probably have given us victory? Yeah, like you said, hindsight's a nice thing, isn't it? But um, I feel as if Looking at the game, like me personally, I don't know what other the other players would have said. Like, I felt as if, like when when the the penalties ended, I thought, yeah, it was obviously very disappointing. But I felt proud of every player because we gave out all that we could. Like, I can't say that I left that game with any regrets because I felt like I gave all of myself and everything I was able to give on that pitch. Um, I think when, the only thing that obviously I've been thinking a lot about the what ifs, like I haven't even thought about when I hit that strike, I'm like, could I have got over the ball more so it would have dipped and gone into the cross, you know, like in the moment in football, you don't really you don't have time to think about that stuff. But I guess when we went down to 10 players, uh, that England went down to 10 players, sorry. Um, I think we probably could have been, could have been a little bit more patient with trying to work the ball because obviously England then were just being defensive. Like yeah. they didn't really have a lot going forward and they were almost trying to see it out to penalties. Um, so I didn't think we necessarily had to rush to find a goal. I felt, I always felt like it was coming and I said that to Uche, I said that to Rash, like the, the players on the pitch that were being so successful going forward. I'm like, it's okay. Like don't be frustrated. Like a, a goal was, I genuinely believed a goal was going to come. So, I think in that respect, because we had more possession of the ball, we probably could have been more patient instead of forcing it at times. But yeah, honestly, at the end of the day, we we did all that we could. But yeah, I guess the defensive tactic for England worked for them because yeah, they they were they were hanging on to get to penalties, all and right. ultimately they um, they did what they set out to do. But yeah, it's uh, maybe patience would have been a, a better thing for us. But that's something that we'll learn from and. Like you said, England of England are European champion European champions and they've been through penalties and things like that yeah. in big moments. Probably more more than what I've experienced anyway. So 
All right. Yeah, we'll learn from it. All right. L let me throw this in uh, c quickly. Watching the game, we're not on the field, you were, and I mean, you, you, you had a front row seat, so you, you, you could be able to tell us. Talking about patience that you alluded to, it appeared like there was a switch, a change in tactics, players, I mean, the right back, Sadasina on the left, Ajibade you talked about, started playing as a wing back, looked like somebody was playing behind Oshola. Some people felt if we kept to what we were, the, the, the approach and the style we had before the red card, maybe, maybe. Do you think that is responsible anyway? <laughs> uh, honestly, like, I actually like that we, we went into more of like a 3-5-2-ish um, when they lost a player and I felt like that was a good idea initially because I feel like we were really successful in the wide areas. Um, and I just feel like if we could have maybe got the ball into those positions more to get more crossing opportunities, it would have helped. I feel like we were really good in the air as well. Um, I felt like we probably could have got something from crosses. But no, I don't think in that moment, I don't think there was a wrong decision or anything. Because um, I, I felt as if like every player on the pitch was had success in their own right so even when we changed formations i feel like we were st still getting success i just think yeah maybe next time i feel like it's probably more of a patient approach rather than feeling like we had to go forward uh rush to go forward yeah let me bring it to you ashley and, and your playing style when you joined the team you used to be central defense at leicester you're central defense now with your eyes every coach want to put you at, at um Central defense, but I saw you do the left back ish. Can you explain to me what's going on? Did you prefer that role? <laughs> um, I'll be honest, going into the tournament, I was really nervous being at left back because obviously it's not the position I play at my club. Like, the only time I play left back is when I'm with Nigeria, and obviously, yeah. being on the international world stage in a position that I don't normally play in obviously makes me very nervous. Um, mm -hmm. but I feel as if, like, I, I always go back to the Ivory Coast game, which was my first competitive game. And I remember them saying like, you're against a really good winger. I had all these thoughts in my head. I'm like, gosh, this is a new position, you know, but, um, at the end of the day, like I had belief from the coaching staff and my players that, uh, the, my teammates, sorry, that. They felt like I could do a good job there. So the fact that I had the belief of, of them made me feel a little bit better about it. And then once I knew that's where I was going to go, it's like, well, I know you're nervous. I always like said to myself, I know you're nervous, Ash, but like yeah. at the end of the day, all you can do now is do the best that you possibly can in that position. And to be fair, like I had a lot more freedom, like being able to go up and down the pitch, I actually really enjoyed. Whereas a centre-back, I don't normally get that freedom. So no, I actually really, really liked it. I know, as I could tell, you bust the role, so good job. Ashley, I've got just one more minute to let you go with what you did at the World Cup. Uh, I don't know about your future at Leicester City women's team, but I'm sure your agent's phone will be buzzing. What's going on? <laughs> um, yeah, funnily enough, my, my dad is my agent, so <laughs> he, has to, he has to deal with all that side of stuff. Yeah, I, I left Leicester at the end of this season. Um, obviously my hometown club so um i enjoyed my experience there for sure and i'll go back and again i didn't really get to say bye to everybody when i left for the world cup so um i'll go back in the next week or so just to say bye to everybody but yeah i nothing's been released yet about my my next club i wanted to um not have a distraction while i was at the world cup i wanted my full focus on that but yeah, in the coming weeks, um, it will be released. And yeah, no, I'm really excited. I feel like um, I've chosen somewhere that aligns with, yeah, it always has to come down to this for me. Like it has to align with who I am as a person. Like I have to know about what the, the values are of, of the, the environment and the, the people that I'm playing for. And I'm, yeah, obviously I can't, I can't say yet, but I'm really looking forward to a new challenge. Yeah, when Kelly scored that penalty and was over for Nigeria at the World Cup, Ashley, did you cry? 
You know what? I cried before. Ev- I cried before every game, but after that game, I didn't cry because oh, wow. I felt. I just felt so. I felt very disappointed, obviously, but I just felt so proud and so yeah. grateful to have had that experience with that team. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashley Plumter. As I said earlier, we're proud of you and the team. Stay focused and keep winning. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. That's it. Super Falcons defender Ashley Plumter speaking to us from our base in Leicester Sports tonight on Channels Television. Let's go on this break. When we come back, more from the World Cup in New Zealand and Australia. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Welcome back. And of course, we're still on the matter talking about the FIFA Women's World Cup. Let's quickly bring you into the segment brought to you by Stamic IBC, the official insurance partner of the Super Falcons. Let's talk about the quarterfinals uh, stage that we're in now. And of course, we'll show you the fixtures and let you in on the teams uh, playing. Uh, and of course, um, Spain. Uh, I'll go to the screen now and, and just quickly uh, reel out uh, the fixtures for uh, Friday. Uh, and of course, you have Spain uh, taking on the Netherlands. You also have uh, Japan uh, taking on Sweden. And those are the two matches we will be talking about. Hopefully, uh, our colleague Cecilia Morgue joins us and we will be talking about all of those things. But first, let's just quickly allow you to listen to what the, what's happening in camp of uh, the Dutch team, the Orange Ladies, uh, the, the, the squad of the Netherlands. They're, they're thinking about how to approach the game against Spain. Uh, let's allow you to listen to their thoughts even as they prepare for that crucial encounter against Spain. Of course, we spoke with our players, knowing a lot about Spain. Of course, our scouting team did its job. Um, of course, my staff did the job, and I did myself did the job. So we know everything about Spain. We have a small book about them. And uh, I think that won't surprise us. Um, and of course, Dama is an option to play, but she's uh, an, uh, an option as good as a couple of other ones. It's not only uh, Damares, it's also three other players. I just mentioned them who know everything about Spanish football, and they have informed us with everything they know. And we hope it will be helpful, but in the end, you don't win a game in the preparation of the game. You have to win it on the pitch, and maybe this helps. We hope so, and that's why we have asked them, and of course we have asked the Maris as well. I told my players in February, when all schedules were finished, uh, we're going in a submarine with 50 people, 50, 60 people. And a submarine is very small, it's a small world, there's no one else on the other side of the world. We have to do it together. And the submarine is going into a plane. So it's not just a submarine or a plane, it's both. The submarine is going into the plane and will fly on and on and on. And we will have this World Championship football, but also this World Championship flying. And there was no option to change anything, so we, we spoke about it and we said, yeah, listen, it's so many airports, it's so many hotels, it's so many pitches, it's so many flights. We're going to take it as it is and not, nothing uh, less and nothing more. So, uh, you hear Lynette, uh, we have accepted it. Um, I think we are world champion flying already now. We'll beat all teams. We have beaten all teams. So now the next job is uh, football. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, the thoughts of uh, the Dutch team. All right, my colleague Cecilia Morgue joins us now. Greetings to you, Cecilia. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us. And I'm curious, I want to ask, how does it feel um, covering a tournament that started with Nigeria and Nigeria exiting and you're still covering the tournament? How does it feel? How is that experience? The excitement is not as as the excitement is not as how do I put it now is a bit tempered down because you know when you have the Super Falcons of course there's always so much to talk about you have access to the team you can talk to the players every time and all but right now they're out so it's it's not how do I put it it's 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 not as it's not as exciting as it used to be actually. And uh, just yesterday, yeah, to, okay, yeah, it's still today in Nigeria. It's, uh, it's Friday here. So on Thursday, you know, a, uh, the English team had uh, the media opportunities they usually have uh, with um, different uh, media across the world because they have their own media center right there. You know, they have their hotel, they have their own media center built by the FA, I mean, 
rented by the FA, so to speak, where they can have um, the players can have access to media. They ask different questions and all that. And we had the opportunity to actually uh, uh, speak with her better in England, you know. Who was dropped for Euros, but then she made it to the World Cup squad, and she scored, of course, one of the penalties against Nigeria. So we had to ask her, I had to ask her, okay, what was he like, you know, you know, scoring against Nigeria, and also what was he like playing against Nigeria, and what has he actually taught them, you know? So okay, because of Nigeria came now, the complacency that they had looking at, they can actually beat some teams when they just look at them. The, that has, that has, that is literally over now because they have to look at the team and see them <laughs> with what they have and not just looking at it on paper like they did to Nigeria. So that confidence of like going into a team, going into a game and knowing you can actually beat this team is no longer there. Of course, they're playing Colombia on Saturday. So that also has also taught them a lesson. So when you speak some of, some of these teams and you hear them talk about Nigeria, it's also bring down nostalgia. I wish we were still here, but hey, Super Focus already home. <laughs> okay, one more from me. I mean, there's not much to talk about. One more from me. I'll you to Austin. I will try to wrap this up. Um, the, 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 the people you speak with, the fans across, do they see have fond memories of what the Super Falcons gave uh, in those four matches that they played? Yeah, you know, the, the thing is that when they walk into a press conference, they're like, oh, you're Nigerian. Oh, the Super Falcons, they did very well. So they're still... It's still there. They're like I'm not sure that memory will live until the end of the tournament, or even after the tournament. You know, as uh, as as the tournament grows, as it's going to the finals, everyone will still keep talking about their performance from the very first game against Canada up to the last game against England. I think it's just a name that will just be everywhere. Chemaka is more like um, the role model now <laughs> to, to most of the fans because of her performance. Everyone talks about Chair Maka. Everyone talks about Tony Payne. Everyone talks about um, Michelle Alozi, especially the way she took you know, the, the stamp you know, by Lauren James. I mean, besides Lauren James, I mean, what we learned from the, the England team as, uh, that FIFA actually written to them that she will be missing just two games. And then we're like, okay, we had our player missing three games, but she's going to be missing two. Or straight to red, how do they even you know look at these things and check malicious intent or maybe you know the ones that was done deliberately or the ones that were done in anger or something like that. But but then the thing is that everyone still misses the super falcons really. It's because they came here and they made a statement and that statement reverberates everywhere. You you talk to even uh cab drivers, they know the super falcons. I mean it's it's, it's just they just came here to make a statement and that's something we should be proud about you know, for the rest of this tournament or even going into the Olympic qualifiers or even going into, you know, the next Africa Women's Cup of Nations, the next World Cup. They made that statement. They showed the world what they are capable of, the talents they have, the teamwork they have, despite the whole things going around concerning Bonosra and everything. Being able to stay together and just finish up, you know, the way they finish and play so well to the heart of play themselves into the heart of everyone here in Australia. It's something we'll always remember for a long time. All right, Cecilia, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, it's not easy doing this, especially when uh, the Super Falcons are no more there. So uh, we'll do this again tomorrow, and hopefully you, you, you'll cheer up uh, when we have this conversation tomorrow. All right. Uh, my colleague Cecilia Amaro will giving us, uh, you know, in-swingers uh, all the way from uh, Sydney. All right. Uh, we talked about basketball earlier on the show. We're going to have a conversation now around the D-Tigress. Let me yield to Austin. Uh, Austin, uh, we're approaching that period where we will be talking some basketball. Uh, the ladies are in the news. Of course, they've made us proud. Proud, yeah. I mean, they didn't just win the Afro Basket Championship in Rwanda. They made records. They did it in style. Let's start with the coach that was appointed, I think, one week to the tournament, Coach Rena Wakama. She's just 31, and she made record as the first female coach to win the Afro Basket. The D Tigers, they were on fire. In the opening game against Congo DR, they destroyed their opponents. Next game against Egypt, they swept Egypt aside. The game against Mozambique in the quarterfinals was tough, but they dug deep, showed champion stuff, and they won it. And against the host, Rwanda, in the semifinals, they did their thing. They humiliated Rwanda in front of their home fans. And then they met Senegal again in the final, familiar foes. And the D-Tigers won that final game 
84 to 74, 10 points difference. Look, let me tell you one thing about this team. is the resilience, is the winning mentality to go out there to win a fourth Afro basket championship in a row. It's not an easy task. Sarah Ogoke is the captain of the D Tigress. And, and for the record, she's also winning a first consecutive title uh, with the D Tigress. What a story. And she's a medical doctor and she's running all of this. Let's go to New York. Still, Sarah Ogoke joins us on the show now. Good evening, champ. Welcome to Sports Tonight. Hey, what's going on? How are you? Good to have you on the show, Sarah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy to be here. It's always happy to be here, Austin. I know, Sarah, I cannot explain it. I'm looking for adjectives to qualify how proud I am of <laughs> the team for what you did in Rwanda. So I tell the viewers, what sort of experience was it for the team getting ready to go to Rwanda, not having the sort of preparation that you need, and then you still did what you did? Well, you know, it was... A mission. We went, we went there on a business trip to Kigali. And mm. the good thing about this team, all, we had a nice mix of veterans as well as new players that came in with the mindset of, although we haven't been together for six weeks or eight weeks or anything like that, we are going to make sure we do everything in our power to get better every single day. And that was our focus. Wow, awesome. The game against... Mozambique, how difficult was it? Mozambique, uh, they're like, they just come at you in a swarm. Those girls, they're athletic, they're agile, they're quick, they have stamina, they have excellent coaching. Um, I play in their local league, funny enough, so I know all those girls very well and, and the type of you know, discipline that they take going into basketball games. And, and the game was tough. It was extremely tough, but I knew that Mozambique was a team that kind of just got unlucky to be set up to meet us in the quarterfinals because that team is a team that could have easily gone to the championship round or the semifinals. But uh, we were able to stick through and, and we were able to get that win. Awesome. I'll, I'll hand it to my, to my colleague in Lagos. All right, um, Sarah, thanks for joining us, uh, EME here. I, I want to ask you, I, I read some comments uh, you made uh, on social media about people not expecting much from uh, the, the ladies. D did it bother you uh, that, I mean, three-time champions back-to-back -back, that you could go into a tournament and people weren't expecting much? Well, you know, this is just me just, you know, just writing things on, on Twitter. But the reality of the situation is that, you know, it was a uh, almost a brand new team and there really wasn't a whole lot of expectation and with me having an opportunity to captain the D-Typers for the first time, I knew that if we lost, it would have been, oh, the team that Sarah Goke captained, they lost. They didn't, you know, retain the championship. I also knew that if we were able to pull this off, that, you know, I would also be able to Hello? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Can go on. Yeah. So I, I knew that if we'd be able to, you know, pull off this achievement, that I'll still be able to retain my dignity. And so I really took it upon myself to do my best to lead as best as possible. You know, we had a phenomenal coach, phenomenal players, and we were able to just get the job done by God's grace. All right. Uh, let me throw this in before I yield back to my colleague. So what lies ahead? I know we, we, we will be, in a few minutes, we'll be talking about pre-Olympic um, qualifying tournaments. And so, I mean, what, what lies ahead? What's, uh, in, what, what are you girls looking forward to? Uh, or you're waiting for uh, the guidance and direction of uh, the governing body here in Nigeria? So now that we've won Cup of Nations, there's still one, you know, or maybe two more steps um, for us to go through in our process of qualifying for the Olympics. Um, there may be a competition in November that's relating to the World Cup. I'm not really sure. But what I do know for sure is that in February, we will be playing in what they call the FIBA Olympic Qualifying Tournament, which is typically hosted in Europe. 
and will have four teams and three of those teams will get an automatic ticket to the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Awesome. Let's let's bring it back to uh, that remarkable achievement at the Afro Basket Championship. You guys came back to singing and dancing, and um, you met the first lady. What did she say to the team? So um, I wasn't able to make the trip because I had to, you know, rush back to work. But uh, my teammates told me that, you know, she told us congratulations and that she was really proud of us. Um, she gave us individual cards saying that specifically, you know, we've done well and that she's truly proud of us and that um, we should continue to inspire women and girls all over the country, all over the world, um, as we've been doing. Awesome. Uh, Sarah, let's talk about you. Yes, you. Tell the world, how do you do it? Fourth Afro basket title, and you did it consecutively. You are in the medical field. Sarah Woke is a surgeon. You're captain of the D Tigers. You must be superhuman, Sarah. Well, just to clarify, I'm a, I'm a fourth year medical school student. Next year, I'll be a, considered a full time surgeon. But um, it's it's nothing. It's nothing outside of persistence. You know, I failed countless times and I always am the type of person to never give up. I look back at mis what mistakes I've made. I look back at whatever I could do better and I just keep going. You know, that's my motto. Just continue to just do the best you can every single day. Whatever time I have outside of reading, I train. You know, I, I use it as an outlet. I use it as a, as a way to, you know, release tension from you know, reading and you know, doing surgeries and things like that in the hospital. And it's just, it's, I've, been, I've been blessed to be able to do both and have the option of, you know, choosing both passions that I, and per, choosing and pursuing both passions that I, that I truly love. Yeah, because um, there are young girls out there watching you now. And some people have this annoying opinion that for you to be a full-time sports person, education must suffer. Uh, how important is it to combine sports and education? You know what? I would not suggest anybody to do what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm literally, <laughs> I'm literally I'm patting my head and rubbing my stomach as if I have six arms. You know, I, I, it's, it can be stressful at times, but I just, I know what I want in this life. You know, I'm, I love medicine. I love basketball. Anybody that chooses to pursue both, it's not easy. Um, I believe that they should just stay focused, have a solid foundation, people who support you, surround yourself with people who are driven towards the same goals as you, and just don't give up. You know, that's the most important thing is just don't give up. Whatever you put your mind to, you know, as women, as Nigerians, you know, you can do anything. Yeah. If I let you go, Sarah, the four pits. That's that's massive. And you guys did it in a row with different teams, with a new coach, the pressure. Uh, you, if you have one request to make to the administrators of basketball in Nigeria, to the government, now that whenever you ladies represent the country, you win, what is that thing that you want them to do to, you know, keep women's basketball going? Honestly, Personally, I just want to thank the federal government, thank the MBBS, thank our administration, thank our president. You know, just my, I just want to give my utmost gratitude to just, first of all, having them include me in this whole process. You know, representing Nigeria, in my opinion, is a privilege. It's not a, necessarily a right, you know, and, I, and that's how I look at, uh, look at it. So... I'm thankful. I'm thankful, and I just hope that the, the program continues to improve. We we'll find ways, innovative ways, to continue to you know support the girls that are playing and improve, um, invest in grassroots basketball, and just right. keep taking Nigeria basketball. You know, you know, up, 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 up. Which, in my opinion, I've been playing for since 2011. I feel like it's been going up, and I, I think it should continue. That's right, Sarah Oguke. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations once again. We love you guys for what you did for basketball in Nigeria. Stay focused and keep winning. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a pleasure.
Awesome. That's it. The Tigress Captain Sarah Obuke speaking to us from her base in New York City. She said, oh, wait a minute. I'm not yet a surgeon, but she's getting into the theater, doing her thing, and then she's still playing basketball. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. It's phenomenal. Uh, it is. And... Um... To quickly add to, to that, let's just quickly uh, let our viewers know, uh, you know, what the girls will be involved in later on. The pre-Olympic qualifying tournament we talked about, the ones we held in Lagos. Uh, the d Tigers, uh, uh, d -Tigers uh, apparently uh, want to talk about, still talking basketball, really. So let's just quickly take a look at that. And um, she, she has told us the route for the ladies, now for the guys. That's it on the screen. You have Senegal up against Nigeria. Group A games involving D Tigers. Uh, you have the dates August 14, 15, uh, and 17. These matches will be played uh, in Lagos. And of course, uh, Nigeria uh, is in a group that has Senegal, Mali, Uganda, and Nigeria. And it's Group A, all right? Uh, Olympic pre qualifying tournaments for uh, 2000, uh, 2023. Uh, all right. And so uh, that's the route for the guys. She already talked about the route the ladies will take. All right. As we go, uh, the English Premier League starts tomorrow. And that's the game. Uh, it is. Um, <laughs> Uh, should I say master and servant now? Pep Guardiola up against his former uh, captain, uh, Vincent Company, Burnley and Manchester City will open uh, proceedings for us in the Premier League. All right, also it's going to be our party shot, but what do you have to say? Pep Guardiola again trying to deceive us, heaping a lot of praise on Vincent Company and the Burnley squad. Yeah, you should, you know, particularly with the way they gain promotion to the Premier League. And these are early stages in the Premier League where you cannot afford to be complacent. You cannot say, oh, because the team is small or they're just coming. Everybody is fresh. It's a brand new season. You know, the objectives are still clear. No losses. You see everybody on zero points. So Pep will play the mind games. He knows how to do it so well. But... You should be proud of Vincent Company. We should be proud of him. You know, he was playing just about many years ago. And you could tell that what they have going at Manchester City is beyond just kicking the ball. They are learning. They brought out Mikel Ateta. And now Vincent Company is saying the things he learned at Manchester City is what he took to Burnley. We'll wait tomorrow. When the action begins, We'll be right here to tell our viewers. That's the show in London. I'm Austin Okonakman. In everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right, that's the show. We do hope you enjoyed everything we've been able to do. We'll be back here again tomorrow. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye now.